Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I am painting up some Deathwing Terminators from the Wrath of the Soul Forge King box set. However, I am doing one thing. So this is the Terminator uh, Deathwing Knights and the Terminator Command Squad of the Dark Angels. I'm just going to assemble them as Thunderhammer and Storm Shields. Uh, they're super detailed. I can see why people don't really use it regularly because uh, lots of issues on that part. Uh, it's just that there's not enough thunder hammers. There's one thunder hammer. Okay. So I'm just going to say what you see, what you get is a scam, and those are all thunder hammers. Either way, I assembled up to the point that we're getting in the way of, uh, to the, get in the way of painting, and so the bodies, heads, and legs are assembled together. Each arms are separate, and the one, uh, what was it, cyclo missile launcher is separate. And I prime them all with a car primer that works on plastic because these can be used all throughout the year and they're pretty good. Alright, on to the armor with Ushabti Bone, Screaming Skull, Iandin Yellow Contrast Paint, Wraith Bone, and Lamian Medium. We're going to paint the armor. Now, first, start off with base coating everything in Ushabti Bone. Even the cloaks and stuff like that, and the things around the area and stuff. Uh, yeah, I just use an airbrush for it. And then once that is done, I then take Screaming Skull, and then I airbrush this from top to bottom to create some light and shadow effects. I then make a small mistake and do a little bit of a light airbrushing with Wraith Bone. This was probably, this was too much. I shouldn't have done that. Uh, maybe just like for a few seconds on the face and the very top front corner just for a moment to add some uh, lighting there but <clears throat> then what I did was so I took Eand and yellow and I mixed it sort of a it's hard to say it's like one brush stroke worth of Eand and yellow with three drops of Lamy and medium but if you don't have my droppers or brush to do it then you're not gonna get it but basically uh, one part Eand and yellow to like three to four parts Lamian medium. I lowered it down quite a lot, and so what I did was built up layers. I did around two, maybe three coats at most on the armor to create the yellowing-ish effect that the Deathwing seem to have on their back, on their armor, on their, uh, I don't know, waist pad things. And so it would go from a one coat, then apply a second coat like two-thirds of the way down, then a third coat halfway down and stuff. Just to create a gradual change from uh, white to this yellowish, and it worked very well. And then I took Wraith Bone, and then I just highlighted all the edges of the armor, and it looked really, really good. I then took Mornfang Brown and a fine brush and then did all the, there's not highlights, but I'm painting the shadows of the crevices and stuff. And it worked really well, including the exhaust on the back. Alright, with Orc Flesh, Orc Flesh, and Lamian Medium, we're going to paint their green capes, cloaks. So, 
capes and cloaks have always been a staple in 40k, but they've also been a very difficult thing to deal with. So this is a basic, simple, easy workaround to deal with all the many different folds and flex. So basically, paint orc flesh, then with a mix of a uh, with orc flesh and a little bit of lamian medium to make it flow better. I uh, then paint uh, all the robes this. Then highlight the entire uh, robe again with auric flesh, like 90% of it. Then repaint the whole thing with uh, orc flesh and lamian medium. Then highlight again, maybe 80% of it. it. It depends where the highlights are and stuff. Then apply another wash of it. And keep doing this until you're satisfied. Towards the last layers and stuff, you start doing like painting lines or feathering on the cloak to add like sort of like cloak like lines and stuff. And then apply wash on that. Alright, with Dawnstone, Gnome Oil, Administrative Grey, we're going to paint uh, parts of their shields and their the left shoulder pad, the Crux Terminatus. So, two different processes, so I'll start with the shields first. Basically, a layer of Dawnstone, then apply Gnome Oil all over to add the shadows and the lines, or er, the crevices. Then, re-highlight with watered down Dawnstone, uh, just basically all over, like 90% except for the deep, dark recesses. Then a fine line of administrative gray on all the edges, or at least half of them. Uh, top edges, outer edges, basically the edges you think you can do without messing up. And as far as the Crux Terminatus, that is a little more difficult. So the Crux Terminatus gets a layer of Dawnstone. Then Null Oil all over. Once dried, cover the entire thing back again in Dawnstone to highlight it. Then with administrative gray, make sure these are all watered down so they flow off the brush well. We're basically going to paint like 60% of each of the Crux Terminatus, basically the top parts, uh, straight lines, uh, all that along the edges as best we can. And then at the very end, we're gonna go again and we're gonna do little tap, tap, taps on the most raised areas, like corners or the bones from the skull and crossbones there, stuff like that. Because the second layer of this, even the water down, will create little like points of light. Alright, with Dawnstone, Ulthuan Grey, and not featured, Nuln Oil. So, a couple things. First, as far as painting goes, I painted the all the wings of the angels, you know, the white wings. Start with a layer of Dawnstone. They weren't dark enough, so I added Nuln Oil. Uh, probably could have skipped that whole step if I used Eshin Grey, but yeah. And uh, I don't have footage of it, but the Ulthuan Grey, I basically covered almost all the grey, like 90% of all the grey on the wings into white. The reason why I skipped it is because these lines were so tiny and so small I had to have them close to my face and I just couldn't record it because I would just mess it up. And so yeah, sorry about that. Also while we were at it, uh, their cloaks have a lot of white iconography on it, or iconography, so I just painted it with Ulthuan Grey. And uh, that was it. 
All right, with Orc Flesh, Orc Flesh, and Lobby Maiden, and we're doing the exact same thing again, except on the cloaks, on the little green robed guys that are on their iconography. So basically, Orc Flesh base, then apply Orc Flesh uh, contrast paint with a little bit of Lamian Medium mixed in in order to fix it. If you use a lot of contrast paints pure, you know what I mean. And uh, yeah, and just keep doing it back and forth, you build up the shading, highlight less and less, and towards the end, uh, just do a little feathering technique along the edges to make it look a little bit like robes and stuff. And yeah, and that's the iconography. Alright, with Corn Red, Mephiston Red, and Wild Rider Red, we're going to paint the red. There are a bunch of these, so we're going to start off with first the obvious, the red swords that are everywhere. Basically, layer of corn red, uh, cover everything, including the sides. Mephiston red, covering the top part center, not the sides. And then with Wild Rider red and a fine brush, we're going to paint a straight line down the center of him, because there's like a fold there usually, and along the edges as best we can, and along the edges of the garden handle. Apart from that, then there are the shoulder pads. Basically, we start off with corn red as a base. Mephiston red covering the top parts as best we can. And then with Wild Rider Red, uh, basically just highlighting, painting the edges of the iconography as best we could. I messed it up a little bit, and so to clean things up, I didn't show this step, but basically I took some Blood Angels Red, diluted it heavily with water, and then just applied it over the iconography to sort of tie the uh, colors together, because I just messed up. For some reason, I just couldn't do this. Then we have the uh, eye lenses. So essentially what's going to happen is start off with a layer of corn red, fill it all in with Mephiston red, and then fill the center in with Wild Rider red. And that's it. I then took Ushabti Bone and painted these little tiny dots on their eye lenses to make it look like sort of like a focal point of the eyes. Basically I painted like eyes there. And now with Emperor's Children, Gulman Flesh, and Pallid Witch Flesh, we're gonna paint the uh, purity seals, or the wax of the purity seals. I like this uh, color variation I found with the Dark Angels from uh, Azrael on the cover art, or his box art. It actually looks really nice. So Emperor's Children first, Gulman Flesh to wash, Rehighlight with Empress Children, then mix a little bit of Pallid Witch Flesh in the Empress Children, and then just apply little dots here and there to show off focal points for light. And that's it. And with Dawnstone, Ulthuan Grey, and Thunderhawk Blue, we're going to paint the Purity Seals themselves, or the paper. I also like this uh, color scheme from the Azrael box set. So Dawnstone base, mix Dawnstone with Ulthuan Grey, sort of one to one. Paint the edges and the lower parts where the light is catching, then do pure Ulthuan on the very edges, straight lines. Then with Thunderhawk Blue and a fine brush, just paint squiggly lines to represent text. Alright, with Doombull Brown, Gorthor Brown, and Seraph Sephia, I then paint uh, the ropes, which there are a bunch of. So basically, painted them all Doombull Brown. Then did line highlights of Gorthor Brown on all the knots and threads. And then I washed the whole thing with Seraph Sephia. And it looked terrible. So I don't know if I showed it or not, but basically I take XV88, which is a much brighter color, and I paint uh, either dots or straight lines, wherever applicable, to make the highlights and the individual strands of the rope show. And now with XV88 again, I'm gonna paint the uh, back, I don't know what these are, these vents, the tips, edges of the vents. The recesses are filled with Mornfang Brown from a much earlier set, but uh, the vent part thingies themselves, XV88. All right, Black Templar contrast paint. I'm not gonna think about it too much. We're just gonna take this and we're gonna apply it to all the joints. Uh, I don't know what these actually are called, like the seals, the in-betweens, but on the legs, it's the most obvious, but there's on the arms and a bunch of stuff like that. Alright, with Doombull Brown, we're then going to apply this onto the uh, handles of their weapons. Uh, water down enough so that it is see-through and sort of 
acts like a wash itself. Then we're going to take Null Oil and then apply this on the handles to add some shading into it. And then with AK Interactive Ultra Matte Varnish, we apply this everywhere, which is very important because the cloaks uh, shine a lot, like they have a gloss on them from all the Lamian medium. Alright, with Exhaust Manifold, which is a dark metal, we're going to apply this on all the silver metal bits. Part of their swords, their scabbard stuff, the handles of their swords, uh, small little elements here and there, the giant cords that are on their arms right and left, uh, their noses, snouts, whichever, and stuff like that. Alright, with Fulgrite Copper, Castellan Bronze, Seraph Sepia, and Secorex Bronze. We're going to paint the bronze. So basically, I'll start off with a layer of full gray copper all over, like their stomach armor thingy, uh, the handle and guard of their little swords that they have, um, the brass that's going to be on their weapons and stuff like that. And then I'm going to take Castellix Bronze and apply it into the recesses as best as I'm able to. There's very few. So this step is barely there. Then we're going to take Seraph Sepia and apply it all over to sort of add some shadow everywhere and a better transition from full gray copper and uh, Castellix bronze. Then I'm going to take the Psychorax bronze and I'm not going to do layers or lines. I'm just going to overbrush to add a silvery shine back onto everything that was removed from the Seraph Sepia. And with that, uh, yeah, we're done. I then took Dura Aluminum and then I applied it uh, basically as a highlight, an edge highlight onto all their weapons, the uh, power cords on their right and left arm and were applicable on their metal trinkets on their bodies. And that was it. I then assembled the models with super glue. And done. All right, this video does not make it look as hard as it was, but these guys took a while. It's just like, there's so much iconography and they were highly prone to mistakes and accents here and there. And I skipped some stuff, uh, steps, but they were redundant. Like, uh, so uh, there's metal on where some of their lenses and stuff is, and I painted the lenses red, but it's the same red as I did everywhere thing before, like their eye lenses. There are these lenses that they have, like these flashlights and stuff. So I did those afterwards. Uh, the bases are just simple done bases, they're generic and they can blend into everything. But man, these guys took a while. There is so much detail, so much iconography, it's ridiculous. And it, if so it did take a while, these guys took longer than regular Terminators would have taken. Uh, but yeah, well, life got in the way and I wasn't able to work on them as often as I wanted to. But that's okay. Um, yeah, these guys were, uh... They were a tedious challenge. Uh, there was nothing really big, but now towards the end, uh, they look a lot better from the back because I really like how the coloring goes from the bone white to the yellowing. But in the front, I don't really get that that well. Their helmets, uh, the ones that have helmets, I don't know, just seem lackluster. Like there's something missing. It seems like a unfocused mess. A mess. Their faces are not highlighted well enough, or like bringing the their angular features into focus. Those ridiculously high cheekbones that are built into those masks. Mm. Yeah, it's it's hard to say. It really is. Um, overall, so in some ways they're really good, but 
like just the overall package when combined doesn't seem to work that well. In the end, I would have said a 9 earlier, but some things just are not working right. And I'm going to say these guys are like a 7. I look at them and they just look plain. The armor probably isn't strong enough in color wise. The white to yellow is weak in the front. The helmets just don't seem to cut it. And uh, it just seems to throw everything off. So I'd probably say a 7 out of 10. That's what I feel is fair. It's like I don't know how I fumbled it, but. Uh, ah, well. And anyway, these are probably the last ones you're going to be able to find anywhere. I mean, my goodness. I actually looked on GW Online and uh, like these kits were like sold out. Maybe they'll refill them, but I hear they're like spending three out of four weeks a month pumping out a 10th edition box set and only one week is spent refilling lost orders and stuff or whatever they're low on. So I pretty much think that they're going to stop selling these kits in general because uh, the new Terminators came out. Dark Angels are coming out next year, their new codex and everything, so there's going to be a range refresh, I think. So honestly, these might be the last ones, uh, well, the last ones I'm going to paint, but uh, like in general, this kit is disappearing. So, yeah, well, an interesting kit. Uh, it is second only to the Blood Angel Terminators that were in the Space Hulk box set uh, in uh, terms of unique iconography. But man, these guys were tedious. Alright then, so like the video if you like the video, share if you want to share, comment if you want to comment, nitpick on anything, compliment anything, whatever. And see you whenever. Bye.